Christ is risen. Christos anesti. Christos vos crece. El msich com. Ha mashiach com. Christus resurrexit. Christo ha resucitado. Christos anviat. Christi unio. Aristotos tu fukatsu. Si du fuchola. Christo boha shane. Second Kings, Second Samuel and Hebrew, chapters 14 and 15. And Joab the son of Seruiah knew that the heart of the king was toward Abesalom. And Joab sent to Thekoe, and took thence a cunning woman, and said to her, Mourn, I pray thee, and put on mourning apparel. Anoint thee not with oil, and thou shalt be as a woman mourning for one that is dead thus for many days. And thou shalt go to the king, and speak to him according to his word. And Joab put the words in her mouth. So the woman of Thekoe went into the king, and fell upon her face to the earth, and in an obeisance, and said, Help, O king, help. And the king said to her, What is the matter with thee? And she said, I am indeed a widow woman, and my husband is dead. And moreover, thy handmaid had two sons, and they fought together in the field, and there was no one to part them. And the one smote the other's brother, and slew him. And behold, the whole family rose up against thine handmaid, and they said, Give us the one that smote his brother, and we will put him to death, for the life of his brother, whom he slew. And we will take away even your heir, so they will quench my coal that is left, so as not to leave my husband remnant or name on the face of the earth. And the king said to the woman, Go in peace to thy house, and I will give commandment concerning thee. And the woman of Thekoe said to the king, On me, my lord, O king, and in my father's house be the iniquity, and the king and his throne be guiltless. And the king said, Who was it that spoke to thee? Thou shalt even bring him to me, and one shall not touch him any more. And she said, Let now the king remember concerning his lord God, in that the avenger of blood is multiplied to destroy, and let them not take away my son. And he said, As the lord lives, not a hair of thy son shall fall to the ground. And the woman said, Let now thy servant speak a word to my lord the king. And he said, Say on. And the woman said, Why hast thou advised this thing against the people of God? Or is this word out of the king's mouth as a transgression, so that the king should not bring back his banished? For we shall surely die, and be as water poured on the earth, which should not be gathered up. And God shall take the life, even as he devises to thrust forth from him his outcast. And now, whereas I came to speak this word to my lord the king, the reason is that the people will see me, and thy handmaid will say, let one now speak to my lord the king, if peradventure the king will perform the request of his handmaid, for the king will hear. Let him rescue his handmaid out of the hand of the man that seeks to cast out me and my son from the inheritance of God. And the woman said, If now the word of my lord the king be gracious, well, for as an angel of God, so is my lord the king, to hear good and evil, and the lord thy God shall be with thee. And the king answered and said to the woman, Hide not from me, I pray thee, the matter which I ask thee. And the woman said, let my lord the king by all means speak. And the king said, Is not the hand of Joab in all this matter with thee? And the woman said to the king, As I so live, my lord, O king, there is no turning to the right hand or to the left from all that my lord the king has spoken. For thy servant Joab himself charged me, and he put all these words in the mouth of thine handmaid. In order that this form of speech might come about, it was that thy servant Joab has framed this matter. And my lord is as wise as the wisdom of an angel of God to know all things that are in the earth. And the king said to Joab, Behold now, I have done to thee according to this thy word. Go, bring back the young man of Bethlehem. And Joab fell on his face to the ground in his obeisance, and blessed the king. And Joab said, Today thy servant knows that I have found grace in thy sight, my lord, O king, for my lord the king has performed the request of his servant. And Joab arose, and went out to Gedser, and brought Abesalom to Jerusalem. And the king said, Let him return to his house, and not see my face. And Abesalom returned to his house, and saw not the king's face. There was not a man in Israel so very comely as Abesalom. From the sole of his foot, even to the crown of his head, there was no blemish in him. And when he pulled his head, and it was at the beginning of every year that he pulled it, because it grew heavy upon him, even when he pulled it, he weighed the hair of his head, two hundred shekels according to the royal shekel. And there were born to Abesalom three sons and one daughter, and her name was Themar. She was a very beautiful woman, and she becomes the wife of Roboam, son of Solomon, and she bears to him Abiah. And Abesalom remained in Jerusalem two full years, and he saw not the king's face. And Abesalom sent to Joab to bring him in to the king, and he would not come to him. And he sent to him the second time, as he would not come. And Abesalom said to his servants, Behold, Joab's portion in the field is next to mine, and he has in it barley. Go and set it on fire. And the servants of Abesalom set the field on fire. And the servants of Joab come to him with their clothes rent, and they said to him, The servants of Abesalom have set the field on fire. And Joab arose, and came to Abeslam into the house, and said to him, Why have thy servants set my field on fire? And Abeslam said to Joab, 
Behold, I sent to thee, saying, Come hither, and I will send thee to the king, saying, Why did I come out of Gedzer? It would have been better for me to have remained there. And now, behold, I have not seen the face of the king, but if there is iniquity in me, then put me to death. And Joab went into the king, and brought him word. And he called the Bethlehem, and he went into the king, and did him obeisance, and fell upon his face to the ground, even in the presence of the king. And the king kissed Abessalom. And it came to pass after this that Abessalom prepared for himself chariots and horses, and fifty men to run before him. And Abessalom rose early, and stood by the side of the way of the gate. And it came to pass that every man who had a cause came to the king for judgment. And Abessalom cried to him, and said to him, Of what city art thou? And he said, Thy servant is of one of the tribes of Israel. And Abessalom said to him, See, thy affairs are right and clear, yet thou hast no one appointed of the king to hear thee. And Abessalom said, O that one would make me a judge in the land, then every man who had a dispute or cause would come to me, and I would judge him. And it came to pass, when a man came near to do him obeisance, that he stretched out his hand, and took hold of him, and kissed him. And Abeslam did after this manner to all Israel that came to the king for judgment. And Abeslam gained the hearts of the men of Israel. And it came to pass after forty years that Abeslam said to his father, I will go now and pay my vows, which I vowed to the Lord in Gibron. For thy servant vowed a vow when I dwelt in Gedsur in Syria, saying, If the Lord should indeed restore me to Jerusalem, then will I serve the Lord. And the king said to him, Go in peace. And he arose and went to Gibron. And Abeslam sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, When you hear the sound of the trumpet, then you shall say, Abeslam is become king in Kibron. And there went with Abeslam two hundred chosen men from Jerusalem, and they went in their simplicity, and knew not anything. And Abeslam said to Akatophel, the Thekanite, the counselor of David, from his city, from Gola, where he was sacrificing, there was a strong conspiracy, and the people with Abeslam were increasingly numerous. And there came a messenger to David, saying, The heart of the men of Israel is gone after Abeslam. And David said to all his servants who were with him in Jerusalem, Rise, and let us flee, for we have no refuge from Abeslam. Make haste and go, lest he overtake us speedily, and bring evil upon us, and smite the city with the edge of the sword. And the king's servants said to the king, In all things which our lord the king chooses, behold, we are thy servants. And the king and all his house went out on foot, and the king left ten women of his concubines to keep the house. And the king and all his servants went out on foot, and abode in a distant house. And all his servants passed on by his side, every caliphite and every phalophite, and they stood by the olive tree in the wilderness. And all the people marched near him, and all his court, and all the men of might, and all the men of war, six hundred. And they were present at his side, and every caliphite and every phalophite, and all the six hundred Gittites that came on foot out of Geth, and they went on before the king. And the king said to Ethi the Gittite, why dost thou also go with us? Return and dwell with the king, for thou art a stranger, and thou hast come forth as a sojourn out of thy place. Whereas thou camest yesterday, shall I today cause thee to travel with us? And shalt thou thus change thy place? That is come forth yesterday, and today shall I set thee in motion to go along with us? I indeed will go whithersoever I may go. Return then, and cause thy brethren to return with thee, and may the Lord deal mercifully and truly with thee. And Ethi answered the king, and said, as the Lord lives, and as my Lord the King lives, in the place wheresoever my Lord shall be, whether it be for death or life, there shall thy servant be. And the king said to Ethi, Come and pass over with me. So Ethi the Gittite and the king passed over, and all his servants, and all the multitude with him. And all the country wept with a loud voice, and all the people passed by over the brook of Kedron, and the king crossed the brook Kedron. And all the people and the king passed on toward the way of the wilderness. And behold also Sadok, and all the Levites were with him bearing the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord from Bethar. And they set down the Ark of the God, and Abiathar went up, until all the people had passed out of the city. And the king said to Sadok, Carry back the Ark of God into the city. If I should find favor in the eyes of the Lord, then will he bring me back, and he will show me it and its beauty. But if he should say thus, I have no pleasure in thee, behold, here I am. Let him do to me according to that which is good in his eyes. And the king said to Sadok the priest, Behold, thou shalt return to the city in peace, and Achimaeus thy son, and Jonathan the son of Abiathar, your two sons with you. Behold, I continue in arms in Araboth of the desert, until there come tidings from you to report to me. So Sadok and Abiathar brought back the ark of the Lord to Jerusalem, and it continued there. And David went up by the ascent of the Mount of Olives, ascending and weeping, and had his head covered, and went barefooted. And all the people that were with him covered, every man his head. And they went up, ascending and weeping. And it was reported to David, saying, 
Achitophel also is among the conspirators with the Bethlehem. And David said, O Lord my God, disconcert, I pray thee, the counsel of Achitophel. And David came as far as Ros, where he worshipped God. And behold, Cusi, the chief friend of David, came out to meet him, having rent his garment, and earth was upon his head. And David said to him, If thou shouldest go over with me, then wilt thou be a burden to me. But if thou shalt return to the city, and shalt say to Abessalom, Thy brethren are passed over, and the king thy father is passed over after me. And now I am thy servant, O king, suffer me to live. At one time, even of late, I was the servant of thy father, and now I am thy humble servant. So shalt thou disconcert for me the counsel of Achitophel. And behold, there are with thee Sadok and Abiathar the priests. It shall be that every word that thou shalt hear of the house of the king, thou shalt report it to Sadok and Abiathar the priests. Behold, there are there with them their two sons, Echimaeus the son of Sadok, and Jonathan the son of Abiathar. And by them ye shall report to me every word which ye shall hear. So Cusi the friend of David went into the city, and Abesalem was lately gone to Jerusalem. Psalm 92, 93 in Hebrew. For the day before the Sabbath, when the land was first inhabited, the praise of a song by David. The Lord reigns, he has clothed himself with honor. The Lord has clothed and girded himself with strength, for he has established the world which shall not be moved. Thy throne is prepared of old, thou art from everlasting. The rivers have lifted up, O Lord. The rivers have lifted up their voices, at the voices of many waters. The billows of the sea are wonderful. The Lord is wonderful in high places. Thy testimonies are made very sure. Holiness comes from thine house, O Lord, forever. Proverbs chapter 20, verses 1 through 5. Wine is an intemperate thing, and strong drink full of violence, but every fool is entangled with them. The threat of a king differs not from the rage of a lion, and he that provokes him sins against his own soul. It is a glory to a man to turn aside from railing, but every fool is entangled with such matters. A sluggard when reproached is not ashamed, so also he who borrows corn in harvest. Counsel in a man's heart is deep water, but a prudent man will draw it out. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke Chapter 15, verses 11 through 32. And he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him, and had compassion, and ran, and fell on his neck, and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat, and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is found. And they began to be merry. Now the elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants, and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry, and would not go in. Therefore came his father out, and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid, that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said to him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry, and be glad. For this thy brother was dead, and is alive again, and was lost, and is found.